This is the third in my video series in which we shall re-examine the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. If you recall previously, by comparing the new LRO photos with the images taken by Clementine and Cellini, we managed to prove conclusively that the mysterious halo supposedly caused by Apollo 15's rocket plume is really just a bunch of bright impact craters. Even before LRO was launched, I had long argued this to be the case. Now, it is interesting to note that certain members from the pro-NASA side have admitted I was right. Sir Mildred Pierce commented, Now I want to give you some kudos, Jarrah. I think you were right to be skeptical of these halos, and I think you've done some good work showing the alleged halos are not the result of the Apollo craft disturbing them. And Gone to Played said, Hi Jarrah, assuming that jacks are goofed, it appears they did, based on your overlaid photographs, then you are right that the Cellini spacecraft did not actually observe any brightening of the lunar surface by Apollo 15's descent plume. Now, after checking the LRO photos of the Apollo 15 landing site, I totally agree with you that JAXA was in error when they claimed to have detected Apollo 15's descent plume in their images. Regardless of the rest of your video, you are right regarding JAXA. While these individuals acknowledge that I was right about the halos, their stance is now, just because JAXA got it wrong doesn't mean Apollo was fake. For those keeping score, NASA has so far released one photo of the Apollo 11 landing site, two photos of the Apollo 14 landing site, one photo each for Apollos 15, 16 and 17, and most recently, the Apollo 12 site has been photographed. One particular aspect of the LRO images is that many of them contain a vertical stripe pattern, like what's in this Apollo 12 image. This pattern causes pixel columns to go dark, light, dark, light, etc. I don't know why these stripes are present. Perhaps they're caused by transmission problems. Whatever the reason, it makes analysing these images somewhat difficult. However, by adjusting the brightness of every second column to be about 10% darker, I found I could remove most of the stripes and make the resulting image much clearer. I'll be making use of both versions in today's discussion. Of all the images, the Apollo 12 photo and the two Apollo 14 photos have excited Propagas the most, because they supposedly show the trails left by the astronauts' boot prints. Okay, and just a quick follow-up on the Apollo 14 images. Um, on what it's labeled, uh, it's labeled as astronaut footprints. Just to be clear, that's an assumption based on the MET tracks, or uh, do you actually believe that's the... Uh, well, that, that is a misleading label. It's the accumulation of a bunch of back and forth where the soil has been disturbed. And the astronauts walk between the outset and the lunar module numerous times. They walked on top of their previous footprints, so it's just, it's really disturbed soil uh, in a high traffic zone. Sort of like when you go into an old building and the carpet is worn out down the middle of the hall. Because so many propagandists have pestered me over these alleged boot print trails, we will be having a look at them today. On the various Apollo missions, the Apollo crews brought with them a 16mm dart requisition camera. These cameras were mounted onto the inside of the lunar module's window and subsequently recorded the touchdown, the moonwalk, and the lunar liftoff. Obviously, these cameras viewed the landing site from above. So we decided to compare the trademark seen by the 16mm camera with those photographed by LRO. Unfortunately, Apollo 12's lunar liftoff wasn't recorded. We do have the liftoff videos from Apollo 14, however, the camera only got a partial glimpse of the landing site. It didn't even see the lunar module's descent structure. But it did manage to see the trails left by the astronauts. Here is a still from the 16mm feed. Now here is the LRO photograph. Keep in mind of these three little craters. We'll use these as a reference point as we zoom down and rotate the image. Watch as we flip through the images.
At face value, everything seems to be okay. Although some of the craters appear slightly off-center. Yes, the changes in the relative camera positions could account for that. But there is something else amiss. Remember the three craters we used for reference? Look at the heart-shaped tracks leading up to them. Granted, it's not terribly clear, but compared to the 16mm feed, you can tell that the heart shape in the tracks now appears more looped and somewhat squashed. It is a completely different shape. Again, the resolution in the LRO photo is very poor, but we can make out a noticeable change in the track formation. Now let's compare LRO's second photo of the landing site. It was hoped that the LRO photographs would become clearer by the next pass. Instead, it was the exact opposite. This photo shows a wider range of the terrain, including Cone Crater, where the astronauts explored. Zoomed all the way out, this new photo looks quite impressive. But when zoomed down on the stuff that matters, like the Apollo relics, things don't look so good. Whereas the original Apollo landing site photos were all pixelated, this new one is just smudgy. It's so smudgy that it's nearly impossible to make out the formation of the brute prints. Though the formation in question does look immensely bulged, even with the craters lined up correctly. We can zoom in a little more, but this further worsens the clarity of the LRO pictures. But I think we can all see that there is a noticeable, albeit slight change, in the track formation. It is important to note that the moon is geologically extinct and has no air to disturb the soil, meaning that any two photos, taken some 38 years apart, must show the exact same features. So the question is, did NASA not Photoshop these very well? There has been debate online as to whether or not these tracks could have been left by unmanned rovers, like the Lunokhod vehicles the Russians sent up. Could the Americans have done something similar at the alleged Apollo landing sites? Hmm... I'll bite my tongue along those lines until the LRO beams down photos of the Lunokhod landing sites. We'll be able to make a comparison then. For now, it is clear that there are changes in the track formations. So what should boot prints look like from high up? At this altitude, it's not possible to see individual prints because they merge together. To find out then, I've created this simple pixel boot print pattern. I'll enlarge it 10 times so that you can see it better. In this image, the boots are represented by two alternatively dashed lines. Each boot is a black rectangle 3 pixels long by 1 pixel wide. These are set against a shade of grey that was chosen to match the background in the LRO image. In the LRO images, each pixel represents 1.06 meters. Given that a boot is about 12 centimeters wide, I'm going to have to shrink my boot prints by a factor of 9 to reach the same resolution. Here's what I get. The prints have merged together, but the line has now shrunk to a single pixel. I'll enlarge it 10 times. You can see the line along the middle. Now compare it to a section of the Apollo 14 LRO trail, also enlarged 10 times. This trail appears broken in parts, but we are able to compare its darkness. Using the eyedropper, we can test the brightness of each various area. First on the created image, the background has an RGB brightness of 115 and the boot print line is 102. Now for the LRO image. This section of path has a brightness between 74 and 95. There is a shaded area in the middle around 104. And this section's brightness is between 56 and 95. Overall then, the LRO trails average a brightness of around 80. So the LRO trails are around 20% darker than my sample trail. And that's despite it using solid black boot prints close together. Well, 
Nobody's going to leave Jet Black Prince, so let's repeat that exercise using a more realistic trail. We'll start with this famous Buzz Aldrin print. The first step is to darken it so that its background matches the shade of the LRO background. Next, we rotate it horizontally and crop it to a size convenient for creating a pattern. This print is currently 100 pixels high. We need to get it down to 1 pixel. I'll start by reducing it 10 times to make it 10 pixels high. Then I'll repeat that image to make a walking pattern. Then we fill the background with the appropriate shade of grey. At this stage, our prints are still 90 times too large. I need to first shrink them 10 times to make each print 1 pixel high, making it like the starting point in the previous example, and then shrink it a further 9 times. Here's the tenfold shrinkage. We'll enlarge that a bit. Now it looks like our earlier example except the prints are not solid black pixels. Each pixel represents a single boot, which is about 12 centimeters wide. Again, I need to shrink this by a factor of 9 to match the LRO resolution of 1.06 meters per pixel. Here's what I get. Can you see the center line? Probably not. I'll enlarge it 10 times. See it now? Again, maybe not. If I use the eyedropper, we can see a slight difference between the line and the background. 115 versus 111, meaning that the center line is about 3% darker. Now compare that to the LRO image. There's no comparison in terms of darkness or contrast. So what's it going to take to produce a similar boot print trail? We can easily make the tracks wider by adding more prints side by side. But how do we make them sufficiently dark? To experiment, I try putting the boots in a continuous line with no gaps. After shrinking, it produced a line with brightness 107. Still too bright because we want it to be around 80. I then tried filling the gap in between, so there was nothing but prints covering the walking area. This three-legged astronaut produced a line with brightness 97. Still too bright. Finally, I made a new track consisting entirely of the darkened half of Aldrin's boot. With the walking area completely filled with this pattern, the track looked like this. Upon shrinking it appropriately, I got a value of 81. Finally, it was dark enough. Now to match the thickness of the LRO trails, I need to at least double its width. Can anyone seriously believe that the astronauts left a mess like this on the lunar surface? For a more realistic comparison, here's a photo of some trails taken through the LEM window. Not particularly dark, are they? Another interesting aspect in the Apollo 12 images is the Surveyor 3 craft. Here's a picture looking northwest towards the LEM and showing Pete Conrad beside the Surveyor 3 craft. If we zoom in on Surveyor 3, we notice there are two distinct bright spots aligned east and west. What could those bright spots be? Go back to Conrad. On top of the surveyor are two solar panels aligned east and west. I sure hope nobody tries to claim that these are the bright spots. Solar panels are dark. They need to be or they wouldn't work. What's more, they are angled at 90 degrees to each other, so only the one on the left could reflect the western sun upward. This white box in the front is a more likely candidate. Here's a close-up. 
And here's a rear view showing a similar box on the other side. Now for a front view. No big white surfaces here. Thus, the only source of these two white spots are these large white boxes. But these boxes are oriented north and south. Which means the white dots should be above and below, not beside each other. I will concede that certain uh, unmanned vehicles might have made it to the moon. The Russians are supposed to have sent some unmanned vehicles to the moon, and possibly our surveyor did land on the moon, but uh, units with people in them, never. No one is denying that surveyor possibly did land on the moon. But with the release of the newest LRO image, we can notice that the craft has seemingly changed its position since the Apollo 12 Hasselblad photos were taken. I maintain that NASA already knew what the lunar surface looked like, as the Lunar Orbiter spacecrafts had photographed it in advance. But the lunar orbiters didn't resolve the tiny surveyor crafts very well, making it difficult to determine just how they were oriented in position. This can lead us to only two conclusions. Both Apollo 12 and Surveyor 3 were faked, or the Surveyor 3 landing was real, but on the Apollo 12 set, the stage hands incorrectly positioned the Surveyor 3 prop. Perhaps it was the same guy who left the sea on the rock showing. The best part of this is down here. Big C. There's a big C, a letter C, on that rock. Now, that rock is on the moon. So, what do we got? We got the man in the moon involved, huh? I mean, there it is. Somebody drew that sea on that rock. Did he do it? He couldn't get his hand down. Hey. This is done in Hollywood. The set designer goes out with little placards and he goes boom, 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 cue marks. And the people that do this thing, I forget what they're called right now, they go out there carrying this prop rock. It's made of paper mache. And they see sea on the rock, sea on the card. They say, oh, this is the sea rock. Only here, they're professionals, and they're smart enough to turn the rock upside down. So the audience doesn't see a C on the rock. These clowns... I did it. I did it, boss. Yeah, 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 I did it. <laughs>